Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today, we're continuing our playthrough of Nemesis. We did a setup and intro video. If you missed that, go ahead and check it out. The link's gonna be right up here. Otherwise, we're gonna be digging right into this game. We're going against the Carnomorphs, a faction that's really cool. They're gonna be trying to devour themselves and other things and growing amongst us. And we're gonna try to take them out. This will be awesome. Now we have our Android and we have our CEO. These are the two characters we're gonna be using and they're from the expansion material. I'm excited to show you what these characters can do and let's see if they can make it through the Nemesis. If you're excited to see if that can happen, then I need you to meet me at the table. Now, if we look at our character action card here, the first thing we have to do is draw up to five action cards. So we're gonna go ahead and draw those. We get one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna see what we got. We have received search. You can reduce the counter by one. Draw two item cards of the same color as the room you're in. Pick one and then discard the other. The next one is repairs. I can discard a malfunction marker from the room you're in or break repair the engines in the engine room. Now each of these cards has a number over here. These correspond with how much it costs to do this action. If you're to do a search action, it's only gonna cost you this card because it costs zero extra cards to do that action. If I were to want to do this repair card, I would have to play this card plus any other card to meet its requirements of one extra card. Now let's continue looking. We have efficiency. Use a room action without paying its cost or choose and discard any number of cards from your hand to draw the same number of cards. So if there's a card I'm really looking for, this would be a good one to have. Let's see what else she has. Interruption. This is a card that's normally used during the competitive version of the game, but you can still use it in this cooperative version by using it as one of the cards to discard. But let's see what the card does. It says, discard this card to cancel any action performed by another player in the room you are in, and the other player must still pay the action cost, or cancel an interruption action of another player. So like I said, this is used mainly for cooperative or the competitive game. Next, we have arm tablet. If you're in a room with a computer, you may check the coordinates. Or if you're in a room with a computer, you may check the status of one engine. Oh, that's a super powerful card. Because if we know that these are going to Earth and the engines are all right from some computer somewhere, we don't have to be running all over the ship looking for them. Wow, that's a great card. All right, so those are her five cards. Let's go look at the CEO. So our CEO is also gonna grab five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see what he has got. He has got just one more thing. After you have passed, play this card and any other player passes, draw an action card, perform an additional round you have to pass afterwards. So this gives him one more action. Normally in this game, when you come to a point where you don't wanna play anymore, you have to pass your turn. This card allows me to gain one extra turn after it looks like everybody else has passed. After any other player, any other player. So you could come back in on other, and if, as long as one other is passed. All right, that's a, actually a pretty decent card. Interruption, this is gonna be the same as her card. Robotic Punch, now this is a new one and it comes because of his robot companion. It's gonna cost the robot one energy cube to play it. And it costs zero extra cards though. It says, choose an intruder in the room you are in. Roll the attack die and deal injuries as, the shoot, as in a shoot action. You deal at least one injury except on a blank. If you deal at least one injury, you may inflict one additional injury for each additional energy you discard. So you could actually do five damage in one shot if you wanted to, or six, I guess, if you want to discard everything. But of course, remember, if you discard all that, I believe this is going to be flipped over again, this serious wound, because this is only like that because our robot is preventing him from getting becoming having a serious wound. All right, we have demolition. Choose one closed door in a corridor connected to the room you are in, or place a malfunction marker in a room you're in. And again, this is gonna cost our guy one energy. So there's a lot of things. We got another robotic punch, it's the same card. And those are his cards. So now that we see our cards, we're gonna go on to the next part of the turn, which is move first player action token. Well, we've already done that. We have our first action. Perform actions, two actions in each player's round until all players have passed. So we're gonna start with our Android. 
So while it's our Andra's turn, she's going to be able to start playing cards from her hand. She can also perform these actions as well. These basic actions cost one card, and it can be any card you want to discard. The other one is two cards, and it's careful movement. Now the other actions we can do for one card is just normal move, shoot, melee attack, pick up a heavy object, trade, or craft an item. So those are some options we have besides using the cards we actually have for ourselves. Now, one thing we could try to do is we could pick up that corpse, but I don't think we're going to do that. There's really no need to have this corpse. It's not part of any of our objectives, so we're just going to leave it there. Now, we can move down these corridors, and as you move down these corridors, you're going to be revealing these rooms, and you're going to see what's in them along with a search token here, and we're going to see what's actually happening in the room. You're going to see how that works. She has multiple ways she can go. Actually, she has three. She can go up to this room. She could go to that room or she could go to that room. This is something you want to decide together as a group. I think what we're going to do is check our engines. We're going to go down and try to check our engines. The best plan to check our engines would be to actually find a computer because she has that awesome card that allows her to use her arm tablet. And in a room, I can check coordinates or engines. So that's going to be awesome if we can do that. But I think we're going to go down this way over to that corridor. And to move, she's going to go ahead and spend her interruption card. She's going to discard this card to be able to perform her move actions. So she's going to move right into this room. Now, when we move it, we're going to go ahead and check what is in this room. It is surgery. Perform a surgery procedure. So that each room has something you can do inside it. And this, again, is how many cards it's going to take. And each room has a special detailed thing in the instruction booklet to tell you what they all do. This symbol up here shows you what kind of items you can get if you actually search in this room. Now, this token right here is going to tell me what happens in the room and how many items there are. This room has a door. A door is closed behind us. And there are four things in this room. So you're going to find the red arrow. You're going to flip this thing to four. And that'll show you how many items are in this room. We're going to place our person there. And like this thing says, there is a door. A door has slammed down shut. Our CEO can't even get to us if he wanted to, unless he has a card that can take that door down. Now, also, when you move around the ship, you're making noise, and there's a special noise die. We're going to roll this die and see where this noise token is going to fall. It can fall in any corridor around this. So we have a three here, a two here, a one up here, and a four over there. So we're going to roll this and see what happens. We got an X. An X is a silent symbol. So that means no noise was created unless you're slimed. If you ever get slimed and you roll this, you have to put noise in everything surrounding you. It's absolutely terrible, I'll tell you that. Now, that's the end of her first action. She has to perform another action before our CEO can go unless she wants to pass. And if she passes, she's done for the entire rest of the turn. What our android is going to do next is she's going to search. It's going to cost us no cards other than the one that is here. We're also going to reduce the item counter by one. So we're going to turn this to three. And then we're going to grab two cards from the of the same color as the room you are in. Pick one and discard the other. So we're going to draw two cards from our green deck. And we're going to go ahead and see what we have found. We have found alcohol. One use only. Scan and remove one contamination card from your hand. If it is was infected, take one contamination card. I don't need this. She can't become contaminated. Close. I can discard a slime marker or I can dress a serious wound. Now, she can't have serious wounds or she can't dress her serious wounds through these means, only through that card, but she can use it to discard a slime marker. So she's going to keep these closed. Also, the clothes up here have this icon. This icon is going to come into handy when you decide you want to actually start crafting items. You can craft certain items in this game that may have benefit you. And this is one of the symbols you'll have that can show you what kind of items you can, you can craft. So we're going to go put this with the rest of her stuff. So we're going to place this card right up here. You can have unlimited amount of things that don't cost any weight. If you ever get a card that costs weight, you can only hold two, one in your left and one in your right hand. Now over here is the items you can craft. I've placed all my stuff on top of it. So for right now, we have this symbol here. If we ever get a fire item, we could create a Molotov cocktail if we want to. But that's up to us, or we can use them for what they're actually used for. And there's a lot of different things we can craft. So she's done two actions. It's time to move to our CEO. Now I've found always moving together is quite beneficial. So our CEO actually does have a card that can help us out. He's got a card called Demolition. And it says here, destroy one closed door in a corridor connected to the room you're in. So we're going to go ahead and pay the cost for this card. So the card itself costs zero to do, but up here is the symbol meaning I have to pay one energy from our robot to actually perform that action. So our 
CEO is going to go ahead and destroy this door. I'm just going to put it down. The destroyed door is different from open and closed. Once it's destroyed, you really can't open or close this door ever again. It is destroyed. So he's gone ahead and done that. He also is then going to play his interruption card to move. And he's going to move over to where the android is. Now, if you move into a room where a person is or where another type of enemy is, you don't have to roll for noise. So we've gotten this far. We've actually made it to one room. We're going to move back over to the android's turn, who now has performed two actions. So I think our team is still going to keep moving. We're going to discard our repairs card to move our android over to this room. We're going to see what is in this room. This room is the laboratory. We can analyze an object here. Now in the core game, analyzing objects would be something like uh, intruder corpses or human corpses or anything like that. If you analyze them, you can actually find a weakness for that enemy. But during, during the Carnomorph expansion, if we can bring Carnomorph tokens back here, we can use them to analyze them to remove their adaptation cards that they're going to be gaining as they play through the game. So we're going to go ahead and put that here. So it's actually a really good room. I'm glad we found it. All right. And it is, oh no, it's on fire. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have to put a fire token down here. And if we ever end our actions in a room with a fire token, we take a light wound. Now there also is items, even though they're, and they're not on fire, they're right over here. There are two, two items in this room. If we decide we want to try to find those, we can. Now that we moved, we have to roll for noise. Now, if you decided to do a careful move by discarding two cards, you can choose where you want to put the noise marker. But we just did a normal move, so we're going to roll. And look at that, another silent symbol. Wow, we're on fire. Almost literally. Look, there's a fire token. Now, we have to move out of this room or we're going to take damage. So I'm going to go ahead and discard my efficiency card. And we can choose to either move down here, which connects to engines two. So we could maybe get there to check them out, or we can go down here and that'll get us to engines three. Let's move in this direction and see what we find. Hopefully we find something good. We have found, oh, the emergency room. This one's really good. You can treat your wounds there. All right, we're gonna put that right there. Now, of course, it takes two cards to treat our wounds, but we do have the ability. Well, we found three green rooms right in a row. That's pretty amazing. All right, and oh no, it's broken. That means we can't actually perform the room action, but there are three items in this room. So we're going to rotate our counter to three, put our character there, and then we're also going to place one of these malfunction tokens right here in the room to show that it's malfunctioning. If at any time you can't place one of these malfunction tokens or one of these fire tokens, that means that this ship has taken too much structural damage and it blows up and you lose the game. Now we've moved over here, so we're going to roll our die and see what we get. We got a three, so we're going to go and place one of these noise tokens right here in corridor three. And that means if we ever roll a three again, we might have to deal with an encounter. We're going to move over to our CEO now. Now our CEO is also going to move and he's going to discard his just one more thing card. He doesn't really need that right now. He's going to move into the laboratory and then he's going to roll for noise and see if we found any intruders or anything. We've got a one. So we're going to place a noise token in corridor one. Next, he's going to get rid of one of his robotic punch cards and he's going to move over to where our Android is. So both our characters are hanging out together in the emergency room, which can be pretty good. If we're ever able to repair this room, I can use the room action to treat a serious wound and I can discard the serious wound that our CEO actually has. But for now, our Android and our CEO are both going to pass, meaning we're going to be moving into the next part of the phase. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and was it move the time tracks? We're going to move this track up one. Now, of course, as this moves up and it gets to this blue thing, that reopens the hibernation chambers. And if we want to use them, we can just go to the hibernation chamber and be done. But of course, we have to have completed our objective. Now, of course, if this thing reaches all the way to the end, the ship jumps into hyperspace. If the ends are not fixed, then it blows up. And also, it goes to wherever the coordinates are set for. If your goal is to get to Earth and it's set somewhere else, you go the wrong way and you've also lost the game. So there's many different ways to lose the game, but of course, only one to win. Complete your objective and do what it says. So we've gone ahead and set this to 14. The next thing we are going to do is it's going to move the self-destruct track. While our self-destruct track is not active right now, we have not started the self-destruct system or anything has told us to do that. And usually it's pretty bad because you get very little time once that starts. The intruders attack. There are no intruders on the board. There's no fire damage because nobody's in a room with a fire. No, and no us or the intruders. And also we're now going to go ahead and resolve an event card. So we're going to go ahead and turn over the first event card and see what's happened to our people. Let's see what it says. It says, 
Rampant Mutation. All characters draw four cards from their action deck and search each contamination card drawn. If there is at least one infected result, the character gets a mutation marker. Discard all drawn cards. We know we don't have any infection cards in our deck yet, but we still have to abide by the card. So all characters do have to draw four cards from their action deck and scan them. Now up here are some symbols. This symbol shows which direction intruders that match this symbol are going to move. So if we had a normal, was it Shambler? If we had a Shambler on the board, one of these guys, if they were just walking around the board, we would move them, all of them that are there, down corridor two. Also, if we had any of those Metagors, we would also move them down corridor two as well. But we don't have any of those on the board. The only thing we have to do is each of us do have to draw four cards from their action deck and scan each contamination card. Um, and then after that, I believe we discard, yeah, discard all drawn cards. So we're going to start with the CEO. He's going to draw four cards. The reason why this is kind of bad is because there's actually cards in here that can fix rooms and things like that. And I might be discarding them. I've got computer skills, open or close one door in a corridor connected to the room you're in, or you in the room of the computer, use its room action without paying its cost. See, that would have been really good if we'd have been near a computer, but authority. Choose one other character in any room you are in. The chosen character draws an action card and moves to the neighboring room of your choice. Wow, that's kind of cool. We've got search. That's the same as the other card we've seen. And we've got stop it. This is going to cost one action from our robot, and I also have to discard this card. No, I lied. It does not cost anything from the robot. It just costs the card. You have to discard this card from the game. You don't get to use this card anymore. It removed this card and ignore an effect of an intruder attack. So those are the four we have. We have to discard them because we don't have any contamination cards to scan. Now let's see what four cards our android is going to lose. It's going to be pretty bad. One, two, three, four. She's lost her search card. She's lost direct access. If you're in a room with a computer, check any undiscovered room or and its exploration token. If you're in a room with a computer, open or close one door. Okay. We also have computer skills. Close a door. This is the same as the one he has. Okay. Demolition, destroy a closed door, or place a malfunction mark in the room you're in. We've seen that before, and then we're back to our search card. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of those. Those were the cards we had to get rid of. Now we only have one to draw, but we, of course, are going to shuffle this deck and put it back over here to draw more. Now you're only able to draw up to five. And before the end of the round, before we actually moved into this event player, I could also have chosen to discard any number of cards I wanted to, and I have to do that before the event phase starts, because otherwise, when you get to this intruder bag development, it could actually play a big role. So we're going to go ahead now into the intruder bag development phase and see what happens to our brave characters. So to do our intruder bag development, we're going to reach into this bag and pull out a token and do what it says according to our rule set. So we're going to shake it up a little bit and we're going to draw one out of here. We have found a red carnomorph with a warning of two. So according to our help card here, it says, return this token to the bag, place the Metagore in each room with a heavy object and or a Metagore. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that by putting this back in the bag and going and shuffling it back up and putting it back down here. Now we have to go put a Metagore on the board. So this is a heavy object, so we're gonna be putting a Metagore right there. Looking back on it, maybe I should have actually taken this because he would actually came to our room then instead of starting in this room. Since we've placed an intruder on the board, at this moment, this is when we have to choose which mission we're going to attempt. Now, the first one here is at least two intruder weaknesses must be discovered. First contact protocol. That's not going to happen. There's no way that can happen. So we're just going to go ahead and do cleanup crew. So we're either going to send the signal and the nest must have been destroyed or send the signal and the ship must have been destroyed. When the briefing mentioned sanitizing the interior, I had something quite different in mind. This is going to be our mission. I believe we're probably going to try to send the signal and destroy the nest. After all, we're playing the CEO and the Android, and that ship's worth a lot of money to that CEO. Who knows? Maybe they can actually find a little bit left of these intruders after they've sanitized the entire thing, and who knows? Maybe in like four films later, they can clone it. Now that we're done with our intruder bag development, we're going to go ahead and start right up back at the top. So we're going to draw up to five action cards. We already have one, so we're going to get this other one, and let's see what it is. It is oh, our self-repair card. Discard a duct tape or tools to dress one of your serious wounds or heal all of your light wounds. Discard a malfunction marker in from the room you're in. Oh, I can do that. I can discard a malfunction marker from the room you're in. That'll be perfect. That's exactly what I want to do. Now we have two right there. So we have to shuffle these up a little bit. And we're going to have to draw three more and see what we get. So we're going to get one, two, three. We're going to put those there and we're going to see what other cards are happen to us here. We got direct access. We're in your room with the computer. Check the check an any undiscovered room with an exploration token or if you're in a room with a computer open or close any door 
We have our interruption card and we have our repairs card. Well, that's kind of funny. Oh, I can repair or break the engines in the engine room you're in. Oh, that'll be awesome. All right, so we've got some really good cards for our Android. Now we're also gonna go ahead and pass our first player token, which is this right here. This also came in the expansion material over to our CEO. So he's gonna gain the first player token. I'll just put it right over there. And he now gets to draw up to five cards. So one, two, three, four, he still has four left. He gets a few extra cards because he has that extra robot with him, which is why there's a little bit different number of cards for people. Fast repairs, discard a malfunction marker from your room. Wow, it's like they read each other's minds. Repair, break engines in the room you're in. Now this of course is gonna cost our robot one energy to do. We also have the rest card. Scan all contamination cards in your hand and remove all not infected cards. If any of the card was infected, follow the infection procedure. All right, we don't have to worry about that. We get our protect card. We've read that one before. Oh, we got two protect cards. Oh, I got lots of protect cards. All right, we're good to go with our CEO and he's gonna start. I think he's gonna go ahead and start with this. Discard a malfunction marker from the room you are in. He's gonna discard that and we're gonna discard a malfunction marker from the room. So we're gonna go ahead and discard this token. And then I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and discard our rest card and one of our protect cards. We're gonna discard both of these to perform the room action, which I can go ahead and heal one serious wound, which means we can get rid of this. I think that's awesome. So those were the two actions with our CEO and they were great, we healed himself. That's, he's like doing as well as she is now. We're gonna go ahead and discard our interruption card for her and move on down into the engine room. So she's gonna move right into here and we're gonna have to roll for noise as she enters into the engine room. Let's see what happens to her. She rolled a three. Now the three is a special place. It's the technical corridor is what it's called. So we're gonna put a noise token in the technical corridor, which is actually this right here. Now this technical corridor is pretty much connected to any other thing with a red dot. So if I were to roll, if I were over here and I rolled a one, it would trigger this noise over here. So it's kind of an interesting mechanic. It's kind of like the air ducts. So it's all the stuff in the air ducts. You're hearing all the noise in there. Now it's her second turn and her second turn says that she can use the repairs card to repair or break the engines in the engine room you are in. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend that card and I have to also get rid of one other card as well. I think we're to get rid of our self repair card because we're not wounded wounded and we don't think we're gonna be wounded because of any time soon at least let's hope not we're gonna go ahead and look at both of these and put these back in any order we want so from what we know the engines were working so i could choose to break or repair them i'm just going to keep them as is i'm going to repair them as fixed that's the plan now our ceo only has two cards in his hand i think he is going to go ahead and pass for the rest of the turn, meaning our Android now gets to go ahead and make another move if she wants to, or she can use as many cards as she wants. So I think she's going to go ahead and get rid of her direct access. She's gonna get rid of that card to go ahead and again, move back into the emergency room. And that's really good. And we're gonna stop right there. I think she too is also going to pass for the turn. So again, we're gonna follow our instructions on the event phase. We're gonna move the time track up, so we're at 13. Now remember, she can only last till turn five. Once it gets the turn marker goes to five, she deactivates. So we're gonna to have to maybe try to pump her up a little bit. We then get to move the self-destruct track, the intruder's attack, fire damage, resolve event cards, and the intruder bag development. Now since there's an intruder on the board, one of these metagorsts, they're gonna go ahead and actually do an attack. But since they're not in combat with anybody, they're gonna do something different. It's called feeding. This is specific to the Carnomorph expansion. They're gonna feed on these tokens and other things around them. So they're gonna feed on any heavy object such as a carcass, an egg, or even a character corpse. Now how this works is he's gonna go ahead and heal as he feeds on this. He's gonna heal back to full. He doesn't have any hit points gone yet, so he's not actually going to be healing any. Then he's going to evolve, and this is the cool thing about this group. They're gonna evolve into more powerful monsters. So the Metagore will become a Shambler. So we're gonna replace his miniature with this Shambler on the board because he fed on that character corpse. Now that that Metagore has fed, we're gonna go ahead and remove this token because the Shambler, he ate it all and became a Shambler. It's a really, really cool mechanic. Now the next thing we have to do is show what this is going to be. This is the adaption for our Carnomorph Shambler corpse or whatever here, Tentacle. If a Carnomorph attack misses, it deals one light wound instead. All right, so all of our Carnomorphs now have that adaption. So we're gonna go ahead and discard this one and we're gonna go ahead and see what our new event is. It is stalking. Move all shamblers, flesh beasts, and the butcher to any neighboring room with a character, if any. 
If there are several rooms possible, move the carnivore to the room with the lowest number. Well, that's again not going to play into effect because there aren't any rooms with a character next to them. Now, all these are going to, the butcher or a metagore is going to move down corridor four, but we only have a shambler on the board, so nothing is actually going to move. Now we're going to go ahead and do our bag development phase. We're going to reach in here and see what we find. We're going to shake this up a little bit. We're going to draw a token out of here. What have we drawn? We have drawn a blue metagore. So we're going to go ahead and consult our table to see what happens. The blue metagore says, perform a noise roll in order. Remove this token and add a red metagore token to the bag. So we're going to take one of our red metagores and add it to the bag in place of our blue one. Then each of our heroes have to go ahead and roll for noise, just like they would in the actual Nemesis game. So we have to do this in order. So still, our CEO is the first player, so he's going to roll for noise first. He got a four, which means he's going to place a noise token in number four which is right over here. Now our Android has to roll for noise. Hopefully she rolls a one or a two or we're in big trouble. Oh, she rolled a one, that's perfect. She puts a noise marker right there. That's really good. So there's a lot of noise around us, but that's okay. We haven't actually spawned any evil enemies that are gonna try to eat us. So now we've completed all the steps in the event phase. We're again gonna go to the very top. We're gonna draw up to five cards. Now he he has two, so we can draw three more cards. So again, we're gonna mix all these up. We're gonna draw three cards and we're gonna see what we get. We're going to discard none and gain three. We had to discard before the event phase. So since I didn't do that, I'm only going to get three. We have authority. This one's really good. Choose another character in the room you're in and choose the chosen character draws one action card and moves to the neighboring room of your, your choice. That actually might happen right about now. We have interruption and we also have our search card. We're going to put all those there and we're going to pass our first player token over to the android. So our android is going to go ahead and take our first player token, and then she's also going to draw five cards. Let's see what she gets. One, two, three, four, and five. Oh no, she only gets four because she has her arm tablet already. She only has a maximum of five cards. She has computer skills. Open or close one door and a corridor connected to your room you're in. Or if there are, if you are in a room with a computer, use its room action without paying its cost. That'll be good. We can do a search. We can use efficiency. We can use a room action without paying its cost again, or we can choose and discard any number of cards from my hand and draw the same number up. And again, another search. We got multiple search cards here. Now, the other thing I forgot to do in the setup, and I just realized this right now, is this gun only has three ammo. I've got to go ahead and put my ammo counters there. I forgot to do that in the setup. So now our Android is going to go ahead and take her turn. Now, when we take our turn, we have to remember to get through this room in two actions or else we're going to take a light wound being in there with fire. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to use our search card to go ahead and move into this square. We're going to have to roll for noise and hope we don't find anything bad. Otherwise, this could turn really bad really quick. We got a noise roll. So that means every place that doesn't already have a noise token has to gain one. Now, that's a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing is I've got a bunch of noise around me. The good thing is that doesn't spawn actually any intruders at this point. We're going to continue moving. Now, we're also going to move again by paying this computer skills card. We're just going to discard that to move. Now, sadly, I'm going to be moving out of a place with a lot of noise, meaning our CEO is probably going to get ambushed by some kind of encounter here. But that's okay. That's how the game plays. we got to get out of that room. We're going to move down here so we can check out Engine 2. We already know Engine 3 is fine. We need two working engines in order to know that our ship will jump to wherever it's going right now. Now, of course, hopefully it's Earth. It could be any of the four places that are on that card. Then we're going to go ahead and see... What is here? We have found the armory. I can spend two cards to recharge my energy weapon, meaning I'll be able to gain one more bullet every time I spend two cards. So it's not the greatest plan, but if you needed bullets, that'd be the way to go. Now, what's here? Oh, it's broken anyway, but there's two things. Now, I can search this room for up to two military-grade items. Those are really good. Now, we have to go ahead and put our disabled token on that room. Now, moving over to our CEO's turn, we're going to go ahead and remove an interruption card so that he can move into this room, and he also has to get out of here, but oh, hopefully it's not going to go too bad. There's a lot of noise around him. We have to roll the die and see what happens to him. He got a three, so that means we're going to have to put a second noise marker in corridor three, and if at any time there's two markers in any corridor, you're going to remove those markers along with every marker adjacent to that corridor, and then you have to draw a token from our nemesis bag. All right, let's see what, a, what we find. I'm going to shake this up a little bit, and we have found a 
car, a Metagor, a red one. So we're going to go ahead and put a red Metagor right there. And our red Metagor's surprise number is three. So at any time one of these comes out of the bag in the room for due to noise or any other type of situation, you're going to check the amount of cards you have against the number that is on the back of the chip. If you have more than that number, that number or more, I'm sorry, you don't actually get attacked by this thing when it jumps out. It does not get a surprise attack is what they call it. But if you had only, let's say one card and this guy was in there, he would get an attack on you now because he has fewer cards, or you have fewer cards than his surprise number. But we have more, so we don't get surprised. We're gonna continue our action. We have to do one more action. We could kill this or we could move out of here and take an attack from him. Either way, if we're in this room at the end of our turn, we're gonna take a light wound. Now the aliens, or sorry, the intruders don't actually take any damage until it comes to the actual part of the event card that is called fire damage. That's when they're actually gonna take damage. So being in this room right now is not the end of the world for him. Now I do not want our CEO taking damage in this room, so we're gonna go ahead and move with our authority card. I'm just gonna discard that and move one square. When I move out of a square with a Metagor or any other Carnomorph in there, they get to perform a free attack against me. So I'm gonna move down here to where our Android is and we're gonna take an attack from our Metagor. So moving out of the room with the Metagor is gonna cause that attack. And normally you draw a Carnomorph attack card, but not in this case. The Metagors attack differently. What they're gonna do is they're gonna cause you to gain a character mutation. They're also gonna give you a contamination card and you're gonna take a light wound. I know staying in that room would have only gave me a light wound, but that we might've been in there for a lot longer than just one action. So it's probably better, uh, this is my choice. We're gonna do this. This might not be the best choice, but that's what we're gonna do. Now the rules for character mutation cards is you're gonna draw two and pick one. These are gonna kinda be bonuses for you. In a way, I'll explain how they work. So the first one we have is boiling blood. Infected, deal one injury, serious wound to all other characters and intruders in the room you are in. If not infected, deal one injury to all intruders in the room you're in. So now I'm gonna have this card down next to me. If I ever wanna use this, I have to scan a contamination card. If of course the contamination card says infected, then we're gonna do the top one. If it's not infected, we're gonna do the bottom action. If it is a not infected card, we discard it and we're gonna gain a new one and put it on top of our action deck. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and continue on to the next card and see what it says. Shapeshifter, you can move through technical corridors, do not perform a noise roll after that movement. That's if you get the infected part of your contamination card. Not infected, you can move through technical corridors, but I'm still gonna to have to make a noise roll if I'm not infected. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a light wound. Then we're also gonna put our contamination card into our discard pile. Now we have to choose which one of these we want. I think we want Shapeshifter. Now, if you're playing a normal game, you would keep this hidden from the other players until the first time you use it. Then they know what your mutation is. But since we're playing a co-op game, it's not gonna hurt anybody to tell what you have. It's actually gonna benefit each other because you can talk about strategies. Now, again, I'm gonna explain. If we decide to use this card, we have to scan this card from inside our hand. If it says infected, it's gonna go right back in our discard pile. We're gonna be able to perform the infected procedure here, and then we're gonna gain a mutation token. And the more mutation tokens you have, the worse off you are. If you ever have four mutation tokens on your character, your character is dead, you replace it with a shambler, and you put a character corpse where your guy was. So getting a lot of mutations is not very good. But if we decide to try this out and it's not infected, we discard this card from our hand and put a new one on top of the draw deck and perform the not infected side. So it's kind of a risk reward whether or not you want to use this. But going through technical corridors is actually really cool. It can help you move through the ship really, really fast. And the final thing we have to do is remove this from the board. It has made his attack and has joined us and mutated into us. It also removes this from the game, but we do have to put a Shambler token into our Nemesis bag. So our Nemesis, so he fed a little bit, ran away, and now he's become a Shambler. Now those were our two actions with our CEO. We're gonna move back over to our Android who is going to use a search action. She's gonna go ahead and tick this down to one and we're gonna look for some military grade items. So we're gonna grab the top two cards from that deck and see what they are. We found a decoy. Choose one neighboring room. If all intruders from the neighboring room, even in combat, and move to this room, each intruder in combat performs one attack before leaving its room. I don't know about that. 
Oh, an energy charge. These are awesome. I can use these to fully load my ammo in one energy weapon or open and close a door in any corridor. Also, I believe one of our items here can be activated by discarding an energy charge. Discard an energy charge to activate this item. And that's that deactivation module, which allows us, let's see what it does. Discard one action card from your hand and one energy marker from this card to ignore the effects of an intruder attack. This item cannot be traded or discarded. I think that's awesome. Of course, our other thing here is this one, but now this can only be found in the generator room, and this doesn't cost an energy cell. It just needs to be activated in the generator room. Now, of course, to activate this, I believe I have to use one card. So I have to use an action and a card and discard the energy charge in order to create this deactivation module, which might not be a bad deal. So we are going to keep our energy charge and we're going to go ahead and discard our decoy and we're going to go ahead and then use this efficiency card and we're going to activate our deactivation module. I think this would be awesome. Now this thing is not heavy again, so she's able to hold it right here. I'm just going to put it there. It could go up here, but it does need three charges. And I should normally put these off to the side, but I want to make sure everybody can see everything in front of me. Now I've used this, so I'm going to go ahead and discard this. And then there we go. That's the deal. She has now a deactivation module and she still has her arm gun and she's got her arm tablet as well. That's the end of her turn. We're going to move over to our CEO. Our CEO is going to go ahead and use his search card as well. After seeing that she got an awesome energy charge, he might be able to pick up something cool himself. So he's got two cards from the armory deck. We're going to tick this down to zero. There's nothing left in this room, but that's okay. We got so far an energy charge. Let's see what else we can find. How about add an energy weapon extended magazine? Add two ammo to one of your energy weapons. From now on, this ammo has plus two ammo. Oh, that's sad. I don't have any weapons for this guy. Or a grenade. Wow, choose one room with an intruder. The one you are in or a neighboring, the chosen intruder suffers two injury. All other beings in the targeted room, including you, suffer one serious injury. Oh, that grenade sounds pretty cool. But I'm actually going to grab this extended mag. I can trade items in this game. And I might give this to the android because then her gun would actually have five ammo instead of three. That's pretty awesome. So our CEO is going to go ahead and put his extended mag up here, and next turn maybe he'll trade because now he's going to pass. He's got only two cards, and he wants to hold on to those. Now we're also going to go ahead and pass with our android as well. Our android is done, and we're going to move into the rest of these steps. So we're going to go ahead and move the time track, self-destruct track, intruder attack, fire damage, and we're going to resolve an event card, and then we're going to do the bag. So our time track is going to move down to 12. Next, we're going to go ahead and discard this event card, and we're going to draw our next one and see what happens. It says, Beast on the Prowl. The Butcher is on the board and isn't in a room with a character. Place it in a room containing a character with a slime marker. If several characters have slime marker, choose the first character in turn order. If the Butcher is not on the board, all characters with slime marker roll for noise. Now, we have nobody that has slime, so we don't have to worry about what this card says. And all of our shamblers are going to move down corridor four. So corridor four is right here. So our shambler is going to move right on down. Yes, they can move into rooms that we don't know what they are. It's just like anything else. They're just walking around the ship just like they normally are. Now let's go ahead and continue the rest of the phase. We now need to do our intruder bag development. So we're going to go and mix this up a little bit. We're going to reach our hand in and see what we get. We have received what token? We found the blank token. The blank token states, return this token to the bag, remove all shamblers from the board, and put their token into the bag. Add one metagore to the bag and perform a noise roll. Oh boy. So we're going to go ahead and remove this shambler from the board, even though we just moved him. I'm going to put this back in the bag, and now we have to replace that shambler with a shambler token, and we have to add a carnivore, or not a carnivore, sorry, a metagore token as well. Wow, now our bag is growing. This is really cool how it went from almost nothing to having all these things inside that bag. That's really cool. So both our Android and our CEO have to roll for noise. Our Android has the first player token, so she's gonna roll for noise first. She got a quiet symbol, so she has no noise. That's awesome. Our CEO, he has rolled a three. So we're gonna put a noise token right here on the way to the engine room. So our Android's gonna go ahead and draw up to five cards. She gets demolition, destroy one closed door in a corridor connected to the room you're in, or place a malfunction marker in the room you're in. We got that one. Now we also have to shuffle these all up and we have to draw from here as well. So we already have two cards, so we're gonna see what other three cards we get. We're gonna get one, two, three. We have received our search card, our self-repair card, 
and also a repairs card, which I can use to repair or break the engines again. I think she's gonna move into the engine room, but she has to pass this over to our CEO, who is now gonna be the first player. So our CEO is gonna go ahead and gain the first player token, draw five cards, one, two, three, four. Actually, I lied, it's only four. No, it's three, he's, only, he's already got two cards here. So he's gonna only get three more cards. That'll be, let's see what he got. He got fast repairs, so he can repair, break the engines in the engine room for almost for free. He does have to pay one of his robot points here. And then he also had just one more thing. Oh, that might be what he uses right off the bat. That'd be really good. And of course, he's got computer skills here. Open or close a door and look at this. He can room, use a room with a computer without paying its action costs. Those are some pretty good cards. So our CEO goes first, and he's going to use his just one more thing. I thought this was the authority card. It's not. It's the one about passing, and I'm not going to use it for that. We're just going to go ahead and move over into the engine room, and hopefully we can repair it. Hopefully we don't roll a 3 or 4 or a 1. That would be absolutely terrible. We're going to roll our noise die and see what we get. We got a 3. Oh, so we have to remove this token from here and also the one from the technical corridors because it's also connected. Now we have to go ahead and draw a token out of our pig, and let's see what we find. Hopefully it's something not too bad. We have found another red carnivore and he's got a surprise value of three so our metagore not carnivore the whole group's a carnivore is in the engine room he's just hanging out waiting for us now of course we do have more than three cards we have like four we have four cards and i think what we're going to do is we're going to use our robotic punch we're going to go ahead and discard this card and it says choose an intruder in the room you are in roll the attack die and deal injuries as in a shoot action you deal at least one injury on except on a blank. If you defeat at least one injury, if you deal at least one injury, I'm sorry, you may inflict one additional injury for each additional energy you discard. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and roll our die and we're gonna to have to discard one of our red energies just to go ahead and attack that guy. And now we have a special attack die we're gonna use. Now this attack die has many different sides. Of course, there's the blank we've already talked about and each side corresponds to a certain type of intruder. So we have two of the sham or one of the shamblers, two of the metagores, and then we've got a double hit and a single hit. Now those hit everything, but only the symbols of these would only affect those. So if I was attacking like the butcher, these attacks wouldn't matter. The only way you can hit them is with these and these. Same with the flesh beast as well. She can only be hit by these and these. So we're gonna roll our die and see if we hit this metagore. We got a Metagor symbol, which is the one on the back here. So we did go ahead and hit him. So we're gonna be able to do one damage to him. And we're gonna put that right here. Now I could add more energy to that attack and do extra damage, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the one damage. Now after you do an attack, you go ahead and grab an Intruder Carnomorph attack card. Now this is not him attacking you. This is to see if you're able to take out the Carnomorphs. So our Metagore is gonna be on here and so are the rest of them. So we look up here, oh and look, the Metagore only had one health. This is kind of like doing a kill shot. I mean, if you've ever seen any of those weird sci-fi movies, not every time do they have the same amount of damage. So you never know if you're actually gonna be able to do the killing shot to an enemy when you shoot it. We got lucky, it only had a one, so we were able to do it. Now, if we were fighting anything but these Metagores, it would have had four. We didn't need to do four damage in order to actually kill it. We got lucky, this only has one. So we were able to take out this Metagore. Now, since we killed that Metagore, we're gonna go ahead and put an Intruder Corpse down in the room. Whenever you kill a Metagore or a Shambler, you're gonna put a token down. Now, the interesting thing is as these things become more powerful, if say we were ever to destroy a Flesh Beast, not only do we put a corpse down, we also put a Shambler in the room too. It's amazing, these things kinda of come right out of what they were destroyed from. It's really a cool concept. Now those were his two actions. He moved over and he attacked. So that means I'm gonna go ahead and have our Android move over there with our search card. Since we know that this is a dead room, there's nothing to search, we're gonna discard the search card. And we're also gonna go ahead and use our repair card. Repair, break in the engines in the engine room you're in. So I'm gonna use that. And in order to use it, I have to discard a card. So I'm gonna discard my demolition card. And that allows me to go ahead and check these engines and see if, or not check them, I'm sorry, break or repair them. So let's see here, they weren't working. So now they're working. We've got two working engines. That's all we need to be able to jump to Earth. So we're doing pretty good. We're gonna move back over to the CEO. 
So since we know both of these engines are working, we're gonna move back into this room and then we have to find another, we, we need to try to get to the cockpit now and figure out where it's going. And of course we have to find the nest and destroy it because those carnivores are feeding off all those eggs. So we're gonna go ahead and move him back into that room by discarding, I believe we're gonna discard his fast repairs card. We don't need that anymore because while well, the engines are working just fine, we do have to roll for noise when we enter that room and let's see what we, what we do. Oh, we gotta roll over here. We got a four, so I have to put a noise token back in that room. Now that, he's only used one action, but again, I think he's going to pass. He's gonna go ahead and pass his turn. We're gonna have our Android go ahead and use a card as well. She's gonna use her self repair card to discard it to move back into where our CEO is. And that's again, gonna be the end of her turn. She is also going to choose to pass for this turn. So we're gonna start by going ahead and moving our time track up. We're now gonna go ahead and discard our event and draw a new one and see what it says. It says Rampant Mutation. All characters draw four cards in their action deck and scan each contamination card drawn. If there's at least one infected result, the character gets a mutation marker. Discard all drawn cards. So we'll start with our CEO. He's gonna go ahead and draw four. One, two, three, four. Now the good news is I know none of these are contamination cards. It's still in my discard deck. So we're gonna discard all four of these cards and we're gonna go over to our Android and see if she's able to do that. I'll guarantee you she's not. So she is also having to draw four cards, one, two, three, four, and none of these are gonna be contamination cards because she doesn't have any. And we're gonna put them in the discard pile. The last thing we have to do is do our bag development. So we're gonna go ahead and reach in here and see what we find. We have found Oh, we found a shambler. That's awesome. So this token is going to make each of us roll a noise roll, and then we're going to put it back into the bag so we can find it again. Why not? More shamblers. Now, since our CEO has the first player token, he's going to roll first. He rolled no noise. Now we're going to go ahead and roll for our Android and see what she gets. She got a three, which means we're going to have to discard this token and draw another from our nemesis bag here. Let's see what we have found. We have found a, oh, we have found a Metagore. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our Metagore and he's got a surprise value of two. And sadly, we're left with only one card on our Android. So she's gonna have to deal with this Metagore. So this Metagore is gonna come on the board and surprise her. And he's gonna go ahead and attack her a little bit. And then he's gonna run off and he's gonna become a shambler that we have to put into the Nemesis bag. Now she's also gonna have to deal with a lot of other things as well by being attacked by that Metagore. So she's gonna gain a contamination card. She's also going to get a light wound. Now I could have used my deactivation mode to prevent the attack, but it's just a light wound and a character adapt mutation and a contamination card, not the end of the world. I'm, there's a lot of other worse things to get attacked by. So we grabbed our two character mutations. Let's see what they are. Claw, deal one injury to the Carnomorph in the room you're in. Then roll the combat die and deal additional injuries according to the result. Oh, that's really good. That's the infected one. If I'm not infected, I just deal one injury to the Carnomorph in the room you're in. Oh, so Baron Von Raschke is teaching these guys how to fight. That's amazing. All right, the next one is Scream. I can choose one Carnomorph other than a Metagore in the room you are in. It retreats in the corridor of your choosing. That's if I'm infected. If not, choose one Carnomorph carnomorph other than a metagore in the room you're in and it retreats oh, okay so we have to decide which one of these we want i think i'm totally going to take the claw we're going to go ahead and grab this and put it up here into our place now that's the end of that metagore surprise attack that he got now our CEO is gonna go ahead and pass this over to our Android and he's gonna draw up to five cards. He's got two right now, so he's gonna get three. We have to shuffle this up a little bit and see which one else he gets. He's gotten three, so he needs two more. Three, four, five, that's it. He's got protect and stop it. So we can do both of these. What's this? Remove this card to ignore the effect of an intruder attack. Remove this card to move to a room without triggering an intruder attack. All right, so he can be attacked this time and he's got plenty of things he can do about it. So those are his cards. Let's see what our Android was able to get. Our Android is gonna gain the first player token. She's gonna to get one card and now she also has to shuffle up some cards and see what she gets. She has two right cards right now. She's now gonna have three, four, and five. She's gonna have self repair, search, and direct access. So those are her cards and she's gonna be our first player now. 
But before we move into her turn, we're going to stop for now. We're on board the Nemesis. We have the CEO and the Android trying to track down this nest and try to take it out. This is really awesome. I love how thematic this game can get. So our CEO wants his ship back. He wants to take out the intruder eggs and maybe brings back some of the Metagore mutations for himself to study and hopefully heal himself from becoming so weak that he has to have a robot with him all the time. And of course, he's been ordering this Android around. Well, not ordering her yet, but it's pretty cool that she's also with him. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are enjoying this playthrough. If you are, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when the next part of this playthrough comes out. Also, please feel free to share this video with anybody who's interested in Awakened Realms games or even Nemesis itself. This game is absolutely phenomenal. It is one of my favorite games that I have right now. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. Are you excited to see if our Android and our CEO can continue this great mission through the Nemesis? If so, then I need you to meet me at the table.